what's up youtube it's your guy alco here and you are welcome to my youtube channel yeah today we are starting a series a beginner series on photoshop yeah where you get to understand how photoshop works and how you can use it to go about your 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 workflow as a beginner okay so photographers use a couple of um, professional editor softwares to actually achieve uh the kind of looks and the kind of uh, style they're going for after shooting and amongst uh, the softwares they use are uh, we have photoshop itself uh, we do have capture one lightroom lumina ai lumina neo uh, the list is countless it goes on 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 yeah so without much i do let's zoom in into the tutorial session and let's learn it in or two <laughs> okay you're welcome um let's start by launching the software we'll be using which is photoshop okay so we will start by launching photoshop yeah we'll start by launching photoshop okay so photoshop has been launched and it's loading so we would have to wait for photoshop to actually do its own work to actually load for us okay so photoshop is open now and um we have this interface given us okay so just as you know photoshop has been launched and we've been given this interface to actually we really start working with yeah so the first thing is that you have to actually create a new document if you are going to work on AD picture yeah so let's say um uh, we are going to work on a four by five image for instagram you have to actually start by creating the document so over here you come to create new come to create new and this uh, a window pops up for you to actually choose the dimension of the kind of document you want to create for your work so you come over here where you have to input the width of the document and the height of the document over here so with the width and uh, the dimension for instagram aspect ratio is um, 1080 by 1350 okay so 1080 on the width that's 1080 on the width and 1350 on the height okay sure so we have this aspiration over here we have um, it's in pixels as you can see here, it's already in pixels and you can change the name or you can name the document you are creating so in this case i will name it um instagram insta i'll name it insta picture just like that we have it named over here so over here we also have the orientation orientation is either in landscape or in portrait because you are working for instagram i actually prefer we go with the portrait orientation and with the resolution 300 is fine with the color mode too when you open the color mode we have grayscale bitmap um rgb color cmyk lab color and since we are working with screens um rgb color is the best way to go and it's not being printed mostly when you are printing you have to print in the um, cmyk color mode yeah so we will still go with the rgb and with the bits i uh, will use 16 bit for this one you can actually change background content either you want it um, white black background color you can change it any way you want transparent any way you want it but i prefer the white one so let's go with the white one and color profile to srgb it's fine you can just keep it this way then you go to create and to create the document for you this way okay so um photoshop is now open and we have this interface we have this interface yeah so over here it looks very a bit scary if you are just uh, starting off it looks a bit scary 
So this is the document size we created. This is the document size we created. And we have a couple of tools here. Couple of tools here. Everything you see here is a tool. It has um, its own function. Yeah, so we have the work area. Here is the work area. And over here is the tool area. You have all your tools over here. You can actually move your tool around. You can just come and place it somewhere here. Or oh, I prefer to actually keep it here. So let's maintain it. Okay, it's fine. Okay, so we are in the documents now and I would want to um, explain the use of each and every tool we have over here. But then before that, I would have to import uh, the picture into Photoshop. Okay, so there are several ways you can actually import a picture in Photoshop and, and one of the ways is just by locating the file you would want to work with. Okay, so I have a couple of images here which I would want to use for this tutorial. We have this one, we have this, and we also have this. Okay, sure. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll go in for this picture. So you just drag, just drag this picture and drop it in Photoshop. Okay. So it, it will have to load for a while to actually appear in Photoshop. Okay, just so you know, um, Photoshop is one of the softwares which actually have a raw processing section in there, which is camera raw. Okay, so because I I did do, um, import this picture into Photoshop, and because it's in the raw state, it's a raw it's a raw picture. It's not JPEG. Um, I actually open Camera Raw to actually process it before it can actually appear in Photoshop. Okay, so I will do a bit of adjustments over here. I will do a bit of adjustments over here. Okay, so I'll do a bit of adjustments in the basic tab. Okay, over here, let me explain the whole session here so that we get to understand. Yeah. Okay, so we have color profiles here where when you open, you get Adobe Color, you get Adobe Landscape, you get uh, Adobe Portrait. So if I change to Adobe Landscape, it will change how the color, the color of the picture looks. You can see it for yourself. And if I change it to a portrait to it has a color it looks. So let's say you shot in uh, maybe standard and you want to actually get standard in post processing. You just choose standard when you are back in um, your editing software, which is the Photoshop. Okay, so in this way, um, I'll just keep it at Adobe Color and go ahead with and go ahead with the basic adjustments I'll be doing to actually color correct the image. Okay, so sure. we will open the basic tab and in the basic tab we have white balance. The white balance is, is kept at as short because um, back in, in the camera as I was shooting, I had the, I had the camera, I had the white balance actually set at a specific temperature for me. So we have temperature and tint. So I showed this picture at 4,500 Kelvin. So just as you can see, it's over here and it's showing. And if I move this thing up a bit, if I move the slider up, if I move the slider up this way, you can see there, it gets the image to actually get warm. And if I move to the left side of the slider, it gets actually cold. Yeah, but I prefer, I really prefer the color temperature I used in camera. So I'll just have to build up on it and actually take it on yeah so we have exposure tab with the exposure tab it actually deals with how bright or dark your images yeah so and also we have the histogram here i forgot to actually take this in the histogram actually represents the blacks over here is the blacks when you move here you have your shadows and you also have your exposure over exposure in the middle and also have the highlights at the right, not the far right, but then at the far right, we have white. So if you want to actually target your exposure, you can actually move the histogram to the right this way and it will affect your exposure. 
I don't, I don't know if you can see from here. Yeah, and also, we also have the contrast tab where you actually make uh, white, white, and also blacks, blacks. So let's move the contrast slider a bit up. Okay, so when you move it up, the blacks get darker and the white gets whiter. So that's before and after. Okay, sure. And we have highlights here. The highlights actually affect the highlighted part of the image. So if I'm supposed to move this thing down, you can see where there are more highlights, you are trying to remove highlights and actually get um, information in the highlight region. And if you move it up, you see it's being blown out. Just as you can see over here, the histogram actually has moved to the far right. Yeah, and also we have um, shadows. Okay, so the shadows are the darker areas of the image. Over here is a shadow area. Over here is a shadow area. Around the leg area here is a shadow area. So if I'm supposed to uh, actually retain information in the shadow areas, all I'll have to do is uh, move the slider a bit up. So just as you can see, um, there is a bit of um, information being retained in the shadows. You can move it all up and you see all the shadow areas are now exposed. Yeah, they are now exposed. But then I, I think um, I prefer what I shot in camera and I'll keep it this way. Just that when I come back to actually work on the basic adjustments for the, uh, for the image, I'll just have to push it a bit up and get um, a bit of um, details in the shadows. I also have whites, which actually are target the white areas of the image. So over here, when you move white up, it actually targets white. And when we move white down, it actually targets the white. It actually brings information in the white too. Yes, yeah, so we have to reset this and also come to the blacks okay so with the blacks it also actually affect the black areas of the image which is uh, when you move the slider up it actually exposes the black part of the image i won't move it down it makes it a bit darker just as you can see for yourself we move on to the texture because the texture actually gives a bit of definition it gives a bit of definition to the image so as you can see if i pull the slider up can see there is a bit of definition in the image that I've shot. You can see um, the edges being a bit defined. You can see the skin texture being defined. The same thing applies to clarity. So when you pull clarity up, they are a bit similar, but one affects the exposure of the image. I'll actually treat um, texture and clarity in a different video and we we'll get to understand it better. And over here we have the haze. The haze also actually, when you pull it down, makes the just as the name signifies the haze. When you pull it down, it actually makes the image a bit hazy, just as you can see on the screen. And when you pull it up, if uh, the image is a bit hazed, we can actually get a bit of definition and clarity in the image. Okay, so we also have the vibrance and the saturation section. Okay, vibrance actually making when you are adding vibrance to an image, it actually brings unsaturated colors to match at par with the saturated colors. Yeah, so if let's say you have the blues in this case is a bit um, saturated as compared to the oranges in this image. So if you move your if you move your vibrance slider up. It actually compensates the saturation of the oranges to the blues. So I will do it and you just have a look at it for yourself. So just as you can see, vibrance is going up and you see it's matching with the saturation of the blues and the oranges. That's vibrance for you. But then with saturation, saturation actually picks the colors as they are and just add up intensity to it so over here when i pull the saturation slider up you can see that the oranges get very orangey and the blues also get very uh, much saturated yeah okay so we also have <clears throat> the curve 
the detail color mixer we have curve detail color mixer color grading optics geometry effects calibration and all but then for now i wouldn't want to go much detail into the curves and the other options we have here we will stick with the with a basic and i'll just do a basic adjustment to color correct this image and actually move on into photoshop and we start the tutorial for today okay so with this one the the exposure is okay looking at the histogram here everything is well exposed so i'll just maintain the exposure and add a bit of contrast let's see 10 10 is fine with me and um in the highlights i would want to actually get a bit of information in the highlights so i'll dial it down to somewhere around let's say 30 30 works for me so let's see the before and after let's see the before and after so before is here and after is here yeah so i would also move okay so we have before here and we also have after here so with the shadows um i would want to get information retain information in this part of the image and also around this section of the image so what i'll do is um i'll just so what i'll do is i'll just dial the shadows up a bit to actually retain the information in the shadow area so i think around somewhere around 25 is fine with me and with the whites i actually like how the whites are looking in this image and the blacks too i wouldn't touch the texture and the clarity because i'm okay with that but i'll move on into the vibrance session and add a bit of vibrance to the image so let's say 10 is okay somewhere around 10 is fine but then just to add a touch of uh, me into what I'm doing, I'll just come into the color mixer and tweak the blues and probably maybe the oranges a bit. So what I'll do in the blues is I'll try and just change the hue of the blues a bit. I'll, I'll push it into the tills over here. So somewhere around the side is okay for me. Around, let's say 15 or 12 is fine yeah 12 is fine i'll move into the saturation and decrease the saturation of the blues a bit okay and also coming to luminance luminance actually affects how bright or dark the color you are targeting actually look, uh, will look in the end so in the blues what i'll do here is actually dial it down for it to get a bit of um drama in the blues okay so somewhere around this point is okay with me so here as you can see here is the before and here is the after so you can see a bit of changes in there okay let's go back into the oranges the oranges you know most of the skin tone fall within the oranges and the reds so if i desaturate the oranges you can see that it's affecting the the skin tone yeah and if i increase the oranges you can see it's affecting the skin tone yes yeah, so what I would, I would want to do here is that i would also add a bit of saturation let's say by 10 to give it a pop to the skin and also move into the luminance you see she's a dark girl and i would want to uh, and i would want to actually and uh, maintain the melanin uh, nature she actually has with her skin so i'll just dial it down by 10 and i'll have this rich melanin skin tone over here so i think i'm fine with the basic adjustments i've done with the image and we'll just have to move straight into photoshop all right